I was asked to talk about a vision for the next 10 years. What I'm planning to do is not to share my own vision, but really to share the vision that's emerging from, uh, from thousands of people in 34 countries now who've picked up the challenge, who are part of an experiment that we've kicked off that we call uh, Transition. So the thing that founds or underpins transition is really the idea that at a local level, when we're trying to look at these questions of, of climate change, of the economic crisis, of peak oil, these enormous issues, there is no cavalry coming riding to the rescue. A lot of what needs to happen needs to start with us in the places where we live, rolling up our sleeves, bringing people together and working out what we do. So transition has really been that experiment that asks that question of people. So here we are living in this extraordinary time. Uh, what are we going to do about it? The, industrial, the agricultural revolution took thousands of years. The agricultural revolution took hundreds of years. This needs to take about 20 years. If we do this, it'll be the thing that our children and grandchildren will tell great tales about and sing great songs about. So just as a, as, as a, as a quick overview of what transition is, I think one of the things that it does very interestingly is it's kind of a, a quite an interesting model of how it spreads. And the best analogy, which is in a room where I don't have to go explain it too much, as a lot of you are involved in nature conservation, is it's like a mycorrhizal fungus that you inoculate a place with, you inoculate a community with, and it runs in this incredibly fine web of relationships and connections. And it will fruit in some places where you expect, and it will also fruit in other places where you don't expect. Often when you go and look to see what's going on, you can't see because a lot of it is running underneath the surface. But it's a really fascinating, the idea that actually what we need to do is not about environmental change in the conventional sense. Actually, I increasingly see transition as being about cultural change, is how do you inoculate the culture of a place so that this process runs and things start to happen. A few of the ways by which it spreads, it spreads by creativity. This is in Tooting in London. These are Bertie and Gertie, who are ducks made from old plastic bags for something called the Trash Catchers Carnival that Transition Town Tooting organised. Thousands of people came out, made a huge street carnival. 10,000 people came out to see it. Uh, an incredible community celebration. But at the end of it, people thought, if we can do this, we can do anything. It's a very, very powerful thing to leave behind. People coming together, doing stuff together practically. This is on Kilburn Underground Station. Transition Kensal to Kilburn uh, have created the first edible garden on the London Underground Station. You can hop off the train, pick some salad on your way home. Ideas that you can cut and paste. So this is uh, in London, one of the transition groups, Bell Size, I think it was, started this idea called Draft Busters. There was money from the council for draft-proofing windows and doors in old Victorian buildings. No one was really taking it up, them up on it because it was kind of quite boring, really. So the transition groups start doing this thing where it's like a Tupperware party. You meet in someone's house, you draft-proof it, you get sent home with enough stuff to do your own house. The beauty of something like transition is when an idea like that works, the next transition group starts doing it, and then the next one, and then the next one. There are now about 50 transition groups in London. Most of them do draft busters. Draft busters is spreading around all over the place because these groups are like small research and development units. In Tooting, again, they came up with this idea that what they wanted to do was to create new traditions, things that felt like they had always been there, even though they'd only been there a short period of time. This is something they do called the food eval. When you talk about local food, in the context of somewhere like Tooting, where if you go into most of the food shops on Tooting High Street, virtually everything is imported from the Indian subcontinent. What does local food even mean in that context? So what they do there is they bring local food grown on allotments and back gardens down to the high street where chefs from the Indian, Turkish, Pakistani, different restaurants cook that local food in their tradition and serve it to people on the high street as one of the events that they do. We've run something uh, in Totnes called... Uh, Transition streets. This is the idea of that maybe change happens on a street by street bottom up level. This won the Ashton Award for Behaviour Change last year. The idea is you get out on the street, you, you get a group of your neighbours together, and you agree to meet in each other's houses seven times. You look at food one week, water, energy, and so on. On average, each household cuts their carbon emissions by about one and a half tonnes, save themselves about £600 a year. But when you ask people, what did you get out of it? This is actually what they say. Community, neighbours, getting to know. No one talks about peak oil. No one talks about climate change. They talk about the person over the road who's taught them this, and they've learnt this. Very interesting sort of idea for actually how, how kind of counterintuitive in some ways. And the key way that it spreads is a group of people who come together and decide to do it and to get it started. And so in Transition Network, we offer a lot of tools and resources to help that group work, because in many ways we've forgotten how to work in groups together, particularly with the people who we live nearby. 
So a taste of some of the things that are starting to come out of this is really, we've, we've kicked off this, we've sort of pulsed this, this, this invitation to be part of this out. Some of the things that are starting to emerge, this is in, uh, in Norwich, uh, a, a CSA uh, that Transition Norwich started, uh, has over 100 members now growing food on the edge of Norwich. Uh, this is in uh, Slathwaite, Slowit in Yorkshire, local greengrocer shut down, the community came together, they raised about £15,000 to take it over. That shop has become much more than just a shop, it's a catalyst for the local economy, there's now a cooperative set up growing food to sell in the shop. In Lewis, Transition Lewis started their own energy company. That energy company has set up the first community solar power station in the country on the roof of Harvey's Brewery, hence my prop, which is that the brewery then brewed a special beer called Sunshine Ale to celebrate the fact that uh, that, that had happened. Uh, in Bath, Bath and West Community Energy, again a community-owned energy company, they raised over £750,000 in shares from local people. They put PV on most of the local schools. They've also got a model now where people are starting to invest their self-invested pensions into their own community energy company. We often talk about inward investment. I think we need to be talking a lot more about the idea of internal investment as well. Local currencies, the idea of money that can't pour out through the leaky holes in our local economy. This is the Brixton Pound who have David Bowie on their £10 note, far more interesting than sterling uh, for me. And uh, they've also pioneered a way where you can pay by text, something which has recently been uh, picked up in Bristol. Those of you who, who uh, live in Bristol, hopefully uh, you're enjoying using the Bristol Pound, something which Transition Network also helped to develop the software for, where you can go into a shop and text your shopkeeper, and that's your transaction done. Very exciting development. For the last little bit, I just wanted to talk about a few things that are happening in Totnes, where I came from today, which was the first transition town. And I think in terms of a vision, you're starting to see some of the things emerging there in terms of where this is going. Um, I've been walking around with a really ridiculous grin on my face all day today because uh, Costa wanted to... We have a, a, an independent high street which has 41 independent coffee shops uh, in our town and Costa recently decided, you may have read about it or seen it in the news, they decided they wanted to come and open a branch of Costa in Totnes. We had a huge campaign. Three quarters of people in the town signed a petition against it. The mayor, the town council, everybody didn't want it. Um, they got their planning permission anyway. They, uh, we ran a big campaign on Twitter, uh, and we had people like Monty Don and Mary Portis tweeting, saying, why aren't you take, acknowledging this community? Costa came down two weeks ago, had a meeting with the community, said we're going to go away and reflect, and today they've made a public announcement they are not going to open their branch in the town, uh, even in spite of getting planning permission. Yeah. But what's been central to that is that actually that, has, that whole thing has been run on a campaign which is about what we do want to see there and the kind of economy that we are trying to create. We're creating an economic blueprint, which is the first time anyone has done an economic blueprint, mapping out the economic benefits of a more localised approach. How much money do we spend on food every year? We find we spend, as a town, £32 million on food every year, of which £24 million goes through just two supermarkets. Then you can start to say, if we just shift 10% of our spend to local businesses, that's £2.5 million in our local economy. That's economic development. That's community resilience as economic development. That is a big, big story for the future, I think. Community wind company, community energy company with 500 members currently going through planning to put two windmills up on the edge of the town. And one that I've been very involved with, this is the old, uh, this is nice resonance being in an Isambard King de Brunel uh, structure uh, here. Uh, in our town, we have uh, an eight-acre derelict milk processing factory right next to the station been derelict for five years at its peak in 1966 made a ton of clotted cream every day has just fallen to bits ever since we've had a community campaign to try and bring this site into community ownership to develop it as what we call the heart of a new economy this is us with Hugh Fernie Whittingstall one of our patrons and one of the big things we did down there the idea is that that site should be in community ownership should be a development a, a, a driver for the redevelopment of the place so for me actually when we talk about a vision of the future for me it's not some abstract kind of utopian thing. It's made up out of lots of things that you can already see happening. And my experience is that when you ask people the right question, you give people the right tools, you set up a model where they self-organise and get on with it and are able to, to run with it and, and, and have ownership of it, those visions start to emerge, but they very quickly step across into people actually doing something very real and very tangible. So I really look forward to 10 years' time. I have a, one of my favourite... There's a, a Velvet Underground uh, double album, and in the middle there's a quote where the guy says, I wish it was 100 years from now. I can't stand the suspense. And I feel like that about 10 years' time from now. Thank you.